Hello YouTubers, uh, Traz here. It's been a while, uh, but I'm back with a new version of my schematic to command block utility for Minecraft Java version 1.18. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this utility is intended to allow you to copy uh, parts of worlds from one Minecraft Java world to another. Uh, as long as you have a schematic for that part of the world, and for the destination world, you just need uh, access to command blocks, which if you're an operator, uh, you may have access to the command blocks. Um, you don't need access to the server files for the intended use of this utility. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get started here and uh, show you how to use the utility. Uh, it's there's going to be uh, down below in the description a, a link to download it. Uh, you can just extract the jar, uh, the zip file, and what you need is the the jar file. You just double click on it, and it should start. As long as you know Minecraft starts, you have you need this is a, a utility written in Java. So as long as you have Java installed, this should work. Uh, another way to start it. Uh, is getting a command line and using a command line like this you can also add in extra parameters like allocating extra memory if you're using especially big uh, schematics you just run it uh, the utility currently supports old MC edit type schematics it also supports uh, exported NBT structures and lightmatic files as well as world edit SCE at SCHEM scheme schematic files. Um, the MC edit schematic files will get converted, uh, so they have the, the. There may be some small issues with converting them, uh, but all the others should work as long as the version you exported them from is the same as the version you're importing them from into. I should say. Um, so there's lots of settings here. Uh, this description here tells you what all they are. For most of the time, you want to leave them as they are. Uh, then you just open a schematic and it will convert it into a list of command block commands. Uh, I'm going to go to my temp file over here. And uh, this is an old MC edit schematic. It's already done converting. We need one command block to generate. Um, if there are multiple command blocks, you might want to use this command block generator command, which would you put this in a single command block and it will set up all the other command blocks you need, except that they're not filled in with particular commands. Uh, but since there's only one command, we can just highlight the command here, or you can just click the copy command button. I'm going to press Control C right now go back to my world I happen to have a command block here uh, if you don't have a command block you can type give your name or at a I believe uh, command block it will add the Minecraft as you can see it gave me one I now have two uh, but you can place the command block down uh, I am currently facing south as you can see uh, the line that kind of intersects the middle of the screen the command block is here it will build the schematic starting here to the south and to the west uh, that's because I chose uh, well that's because the way it works <laughs> the description shows you how it, you can choose uh, whatever don't worry about it. <laughs> I will now right click on this and I'll paste my command in there. I will now power this command block. I'm going to use a redstone torch. You could put a redstone block next to this or run redstone into it and, or use a button or a switch. I just like doing that. And there we go. This is the creeper schematic. Uh, it goes as far as... Uh, placing 
well, everything that was in the schematic, including the contents of chests and things like that. Um, <laughs> so, that was a old style schematic from MC Edit. Let's, let's try the other types. Um, we got um, an MBT file. This I actually, uh, oh, I do have one right here. This you can make using these structure blocks. Uh, if, if you want to copy something, uh, I'll place this here. Uh, and uh, we're going to go, that'll be the one corner. And let's get a little bit of dirt here. Put this in save mode, and you then say detect position. You can see the whole thing gets outlined. You can then click this save. This changes the mode. This actually does, and uh, so that saved the structure into the world file. There'll be a, a structures directory, and now there'll be uh, inside that a generated directory where you'll find this MBT file. Uh, but as you see, I loaded this other MBT file called Flower Farm 34. It's a flower farm that I designed that is uh, 34, 39, 39 blocks long. It needs three command blocks. So I'm gonna do this one manually. Uh, so you put three command blocks in a row. Uh, the first one, Again, it will start here, and because I chose east, no space there. Sorry, that is, yeah, south and east. I think I said west before. South and east. Uh, the following command blocks are east with no space between. Uh, so, I will copy. A good way to do it is I like to drag this down here. Copy command block one, paste command block one. Clicking command block two, that automatically gives your cursor back. You can now click copy command two, paste, hit done. Clicking the third command block, copy command block three, paste command block three, click done. And now you just power them in turn. Uh, I'll wait for the text to disappear. Oh, there we go. So there's the first one. Uh, it leaves some stuff behind, which gets reused by the second command block. And then the third command block will delete all of them. And here is the flower farm. Uh, so if I uh, flip the switch, it's right here. It grows a whole bunch of flowers. And then when you turn it off, they get all pushed into the hoppers over here and get sorted. Well, I'm guessing we're getting... Oh, oh yeah, we are getting... <laughs> they should be... Oh, I probably don't see him in there. They're going right into the, uh... Uh... They're getting composted in the composter. Anyway, so that is, uh... That. Let's put one more down here. Um... Let's do the next one. Uh... I'm not sure how big the... Well, I know how big that one is. This is my son. Black Pearl. This is a world edit file. 
Uh, this is pretty big, <laughs> and it needs eight command blocks. So we're going to use this command block generator command. And this does two things for you. First, you put it in here, you power that command block, and it puts the amount of command blocks down that you need. In addition, every fifth one is turned, so, you know, you one, two, three, four, you, oh, okay, this is the fifth one, it's right, as you go, so the fifth, the tenth, uh, etc., etc., uh, but every fifth one is up, but also every 25th one will have the square side up. Uh, the direction these are facing doesn't matter for this use, uh, but that will help you as you're filling them out to not lose your track. Uh, so you just remove that, and now we put the commands in. Again, it clears the f this first one, so we're going to copy command 1, 2, Three, four. Okay, this is the fifth one. We know because it's turned. Copy command five. We know we didn't lose place. Uh, six, seven, and eight. And now we're done. Uh, if you do make a mistake, you can click Reset here, and it resets it back to 1. And now, uh, to run this, you used to be able, this is a flying machine that will go by and power all of the, these in order. You used to be able to just run that, uh, but because of the way they made changes to Falling Sand back in version 14, uh, that we now have to, if we just use Falling Sand, all the blocks would like land inside each other, which would be, cause problems. Uh, if you look closely, you'll, you, I'm now using armor stands to get the proper separation. Uh, but because of that, this first command takes longer to run, and the second command gets activated before the first command fully finishes. So what I suggest to do now is power this first command block uh, with like a torch, like I'm doing on the side here. All right, that puts the first part in. And then you just activate this flying machine. And it will run the rest and cause quite a bit of lag. And it's finished. Um, uh, but as you can see, it's made a nice ship, including uh, the water the ship was in, and uh, yeah, I don't think the uh, glow squid were part of the schematic, but because it's dark under the ship, they spawned in. Uh, finally, um, you can use lightmatic files. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that is a mod, just like Warlet is a mod, but Lightmatic is a client side only. Well, it can be client side only. And uh, actually, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but let's do Trading Hall Big. Lightmatic, open it up. Again, this one comes out to eight commands. I'll uh, do the same thing here. Copy this. Same thing, it gives us eight command blocks and the flying machine one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Power this first one, and uh, you can activate 
flying machine. And apparently this is going to completely lag out again. Uh, there we go. Uh, this happens to have its front over here. And uh, this is a trading hall. Uh, it doesn't include the uh, villagers because I actually wanted to get them in legitimately. Uh, but it does contain everything we need, including like, hey, here's the you know, uh, workstations for all the villagers. Brewing of weakness potions because you can have a uh, zombie back here that will uh, get you discounts. Um, so, <laughs> as I showed before, you can, uh, with MBT files, select parts of worlds and save them off currently. However, MBT files have a limit of. Uh, Four chunks by four chunks by four chunks tall, or you know, at something they have a limited amount that they can store. Uh, you can't do a huge area. In fact, like this ship would be bigger. And in fact, that this uh, trading hall I think is technically bigger than you can store with an MBT file. You obviously, you can do something like this with an MBT file. Uh, that is why I have uh, World Edit, which I've actually never used. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, but I am familiar with uh, Lightmatica. In fact, I have another client here. Uh, this is where this structure came from <laughs> and the flower farm. But uh, you can select areas. Uh, in fact, if I, uh, if I, well, you can see this block should be red. To that block is selected from Lightmatica, and uh, you can go into M and you know save out the schematic trading hall big and. Uh, Right, there's the save schematic button, and that's how you get the light mattocks. And this does not have any size limit. Uh, so if you want to save out parts of worlds that you're in, like, you, yeah, this doesn't need anything on the server side. It works in single player and multiplayer. Uh, light mattocks are intended to, you know, make holographic schematics that you then build up in single player. Uh, but if, if you don't want to do that, and you just want to spawn them in, you can use my utility to then convert the Lightmatic to a bunch of commands that will spawn in. Uh, I've been working on the code. I actually recently uh, got a suggestion <laughs> uh, to have this also work for Bedrock. Um, I'm going to look into it. In the past, uh, I have avoided supporting Bedrock uh, because, well, two main reasons. The first is uh, their commands, like these commands, um, I need to not only supply the type of block, but then I need to supply uh, basically MBT data, which Bedrock does not support. And I need this to, well, in particular, the major thing is to stick multiple commands into one command block. This actually, uh, well, as you saw, it spawns a uh, powered activator rail and then uh, command block minecarts fall onto that, each having their own command that, that gets run, and then the last command deletes all of that. Um, and you can't do that in Bedrock. I do have a different output format. The normal output format is command block. I currently support data packs as well. And uh, this sticks all the commands into a data pack and uh, you get a function. Uh, you can install the data pack into the world. You can look up how to do that. Uh, but. 
Well, let me come over here and uh, do an example. We're actually going to be making that. Uh, this is someone else's schematic that I've converted. Uh, so I can type caps lock off. Well, So, uh, as you sure there was spawn and spawn two, all you need is the first one. It will automatically run the second one if needed. A function can hold, like, a command block itself can hold 300-ish commands, depending on how big the commands are. A function can hold 65,000 commands. Uh, and this one will need more than that, uh, so there's a second function. But if I power this, it will really lag out the game. But it ran the first function and then the second function. And you can see it's not quite rendered incompletely yet. Uh, but if you have a really big schematic and you have access to the game files using these data packs, you can see how much easier it is. Uh, Bedrock Minecraft doesn't have data packs, but it has behavior packs, and the behavior packs can have these functions. Um, however, <laughs> the commands, the block names in particular in uh, Bedrock are not the same as Java. I mean, many of them are, there's dirt, but like stone, or let's say here, this is what andersite. Andersite in mine in Java Minecraft, you just call this polished andersite in a command. Uh, I believe it's something like stone five in Bedrock. So uh, a lot of the block names are the same, you know, dirt things like that but a lot of them are different as well so I have to figure out all the differences and then there's also a slight differences in some of the commands that I'll have to figure out if that will affect how I generate it but I should be able to package everything into a behavior pack um, but that will take some work uh, so don't expect that soon but it's something I'm going to look into supporting. And, uh, yeah, that's this utility. Uh, if you find it useful, let me know below. If you find an issue, like if you have a schematic that doesn't convert correctly, <laughs> let me know as well, either below in the comments or uh, in my uh, GitHub issue tracker for this utility. And, uh, yeah, I... I, I know there's there's one issue I know of, and I actually don't have an example of it right now. Uh, the issue I think is relatively minor, but uh, dripstone is one of the new blocks, and I you know I support the dripstone, <laughs> but if you have dripstone like this. It won't actually be connected. It will be, um, well, the points will be almost touching, but not actually connected when they get regenerated. And uh, you, this dripstone was a problem uh, because for most structures, I build them from the bottom up because everything gets supported. That way, if you do have sand, hey, I put the block under the sand first so the sand doesn't fall. Dripstone, <laughs> if I did that, if I placed the block here without the block there, it would be as if it was like that and it would fall and break. So I had to treat dripstone differently. I can, the upside down, up the right side, well, the ones like this, I can place bottom up. The ones like this, I have to make sure I place that one first and then this one. Otherwise, 
that happens. And because of that, uh, for some reason, they they don't touch ever. But they get really close. Like it's almost exactly like this, except there's like two pixels missing where they touch. Actually, um, that's the best I could figure out how to do it. But yeah, <laughs> any issues you find, um, let me know if, if you know, because I'd like to get this working as accurately as possible to the you know original world. Uh, yeah, once you're done with a schematic, you can just delete everything, uh, including all the command blocks, and you've got your thing. Um, you can do offsets, and this changes where the build starts. Uh, this happens to be a super flat world, but if you were at, you know, ground level 64, and you wanted something to build, you know, from zero and up, you can say, okay, I want my block at 64, so uh, do the Y offset of negative 64, because I want to start 64 below where the command block is. Uh, I do support one other change, <laughs> is I now, I used to only support Y offsets of 256, and, well, Z, uh, X and Y, X and Z offsets, I'd support it up to a thousand. Um, I now support up to 320 or 319 because hey the world's bigger now uh, just if you have a big build uh, you'll need the area that this goes in to be loaded so um, like I have my draw distance set really high and that's what allowed this whole thing to spawn in if I had my draw distance set to like 12 which is the normal side size I'm not sure the farthest corner over here would actually be loaded in because it wouldn't like the area that gets blocks placed needs to be loaded so either uh, have some friends or uh, especially with the uh, data pack uh, and if I put the slash in front. I have C spawn flying. Uh, basically, before it's like, <laughs> if you have that in the block, it will tell you port you over the center so you are loading the most area of the build area that you can. Um, and the game, the utility actually will give you a warning. Um, oh, I guess I closed it. Uh, <laughs> it will give you a warning. If if you uh, might need to expand the view distance from the default, uh, that's everything. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.